QLC Plus Web Interface Part 3 Virtual Console Design. So whenever I'm designing my virtual console, I try to make whatever I'm designing fit on one page. So for in this instance here, we're looking at my computer screen and you can see that I have some scroll bars. So what I'll try to do is reduce this down so that it's just one desktop and I don't have to worry about scrolling up or down or left or right so that everything would fit on that desktop. So if you've never used this part of the toolbar before, up here where the wrench and the screwdriver is, is where you adjust the size of your virtual console desktop. Right now I've got a width of 2000 and a height of 1000. So I'll just kind of change some settings here and see what I can come up in. Let's change the width to 1800. And as we can see, then we got rid of the scroll bar down here. So that looks like a good width. I do have a little bit of space along the sides, but it's not bad. Now we have a little bit of scrolling going on up and down. So let's change the height to, let's say, 900. Okay, so my scroll bars are gone. So I know now that everything will fit on this desktop here. And I don't have to worry about scrolling up and down and around. And I kind of like to design my desktop that way. So with the same thought process in mind, what I like to do is design something that's going to fit on my smartphone or on my tablet so that I don't have to go scrolling around a lot. So in the background here, I do have my smartphone activated already and it's reading the console design from QLC Plus. But we'll need to make a different layout of the desktop so it fits my smartphone better. So let's try something that's a little bit narrower, maybe 500. Okay, so that looks more like a smartphone. And we have a height here of uh, 900, let's say more like 1000. Okay, now as I update my smartphone, you can see on my desktop design, I can see where my desktop is. And I do have some scroll bars here. But over here, I really can't see what's going on. It doesn't show me any spaces on the side or anything. So what you need to do to be able to see this is click on this desktop that you're designing, go to the palette and give it a color like the dark blue, click OK. Now when I update my smartphone, you can see it's only occupying a part of this. So what I'm going to try to do then is get this blue space to occupy my whole cell phone screen, but not more than what I need it to be so that I don't have to scroll around. Now, after some experimentation, I came up with the numbers of a width of 970 and a height of 1800. You will have to work with this and update your smartphone or tablet from time to time as you try the different settings to get to something that's going to actually fit the screen. And of course, this will be different if you're working in portrait or landscape mode. So I'm just kind of trying to work in portrait mode here. So oh, good, I've established my desktop. Um, this is gonna fit my smartphone nicely. I won't have to be scrolling around, even though I am scrolling on the main screen here, I won't have to scroll around on my smartphone very much. All right, so I can start placing some widgets on here. A uh, typical kind of widget is buttons. So I'm gonna use my button tool. Now, one of the limits that I found in here is that using the multiple button tool, the largest button size you can make is 99 pixels. I'm going to go five across by two down. And that looks like that, which looks fine on the computer screen. But when I update my phone, it's like, okay, these buttons look a little small to me. But using the multiple button feature, that's as large as I can get them. So instead of using that feature, I'm going to get rid of that widget. I'm just bringing on a single button. And then I can adjust the size of the button to be whatever I want it to be. I'm not limited by that 99. As I update my phone, you can see that. Now it's just a simple procedure of selecting that button, hitting Control Copy, click on the desktop, Control V, click on the desktop, Control V, click on the desktop, Control V, click on the desktop, Control V. Now I can go in and assign my buttons or color them as I wish. And let me update my phone here so you can see the button. So now these are a little more usable, particularly because I have fat fingers and they tend to push things that they shouldn't be pushing. So I can design my desktop that's going to work better with my fingers on my smartphone. If you do have a computer application all set up for your 
rig in your theater or whatever, you can always do a save as and then do another virtual console that works with the smartphone. So you can flip back and forth between the smartphone version of your setup and the computer version. Okay, that's always a possibility too. All right, but we've got the buttons up. It will accept colors, so I can select the button and I can give it a color, such as red. And if I update my phone, that'll be there. One of the things that it does not do is it will not update font sizes. For example, if I select this button and I say I would like a font size of, let's say, 24, and it comes up button 10, you'll notice that in the web interface, these font sizes do not change. So that's one thing that doesn't work with the web interface. They've got a standard font size, and you can't change that. Even though it appears to change on the computer screen, it won't change on the smartphone or tablet. The font size will stay the same. One little drawback. Another thing, sometimes you'll notice that from time to time, to get fancy, I may use a tile background on here. So I'll select it, select tile, go to my desktop, and I have a folder with some texture tiles on here, such as this. And that would look like that on my computer desktop, but that is not part of the web interface. It'll simply put up black instead of putting up pictures. So I'm just going to go back to my dark blue on there for my background and then update my phone. All right. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, um, probably what I should have done too, is made a solo frame here and then put these buttons in the solo frame so they can work one at a time or make an independent frame. And if you're not sure about how to do those things, then take a look at my tutorials about using solo frames and using independent frames and putting buttons in them. You can also do multiple pages here. So take a look at my tutorial about doing pages and that would apply here. We're basically just trying here as far as the desktop size to make something that fits to my phone that I'm going to be happy with. Now, I can put in a queue list on here. So I'll click here and expand, put my queue list in. And I'm going to drag this so that it's the full width. The same limitation goes here that uh, normally when I have a queue list up and operating, I can change the font sizes. Font sizes will not affect what comes up over here. I'm going to double click my queue list. I'm going to assign it to my main queue section here where I put in a whole bunch of queues and said OK. And I've got 20 some queues in here. Let me just adjust the size of that. So, and we'll update my smartphone screen and it looks like that. So now, this is kind of tiny to be able to run on your smartphone. You really can't see like the names of the queues, timings, fade-ins, fade-outs, and any notes that you might have. So you could always rotate your screen sideways, and I'll do that. So I'm going to flip my smartphone to the side, and I get a little better picture of my queue list, which is a little bit easier to work with. But now again, all of my cues don't appear on here, so I'm going to, have to take my finger and scroll up a little bit. And there's my cue list, but again, it doesn't fit the screen. So what I'm going to do is adjust the size of this widget so I can get the cue list to fit. Let me update my phone once. See if we can get the cue list to fit. There we go. The cue list fits a lot better and it fits my whole phone screen so I don't have to keep scrolling up and down. If I go into run mode here, I could from my phone then actually control the queue list. I'll hit my start button. Queue list is up and running. Now I want to show you one other peculiarity here. I have more than 14 queues, but as I run down the queue list by pressing the next button, and you'll see next, and you'll see them both progressing here and progressing over here. And notice there's two that on my phone, it's showing me I'm on Q3, but it doesn't show the next Q is 4. Where over here, it says I'm on Q3 and next Q is 4. But I'm going to progress down. Now on the computer, when I get to the bottom of a Q list, it automatically scrolls up. So now I'm on Q14. And notice how this scrolled up so I can still see what's going on. Watch what happens on the phone here. It kind of disappears from sight. You can put your finger on the queue list and scroll it up a little bit so that you can see the remainder of the queue list. So there's that little bit of a drawback. There's no auto scroll where it automatically moves up. You actually have to take, put your finger on the queue list, move it up. Now I can see the remainder of my screen 
and go down. And of course, after I get to the last shoe, which is 20, it will recycle back to the beginning, which again, I can't see. I can see it on the computer screen, but on my smartphone, I'll have to grab the list and just scroll it down so that I can see what's going on. So there is that little bit of a limitation. Now again, this was designed for the portrait version of the phone so that it fits. So in this version, I don't have any scrolling around or anything going on, except, except for that little bit there where I can get rid of the top buttons. But when I go to landscape mode now, notice that I'm going to have a lot of scrolling going on and I can actually scroll down to the bottom of the screen, which is all blue. So again, design depends upon you. If you want to set this up as simply a landscape uh, version so that you know every time you bring this up, you're going to be using your phone in landscape mode, then again, you're going to want to go and adjust your desktop size here so that it fits in landscape mode and it can't possibly scroll out of the way. All right. But in general, you'd be able to use this to design at least some kind of a virtual console desktop that would be useful for you, whether it's bringing up individual scenes or bringing up a queue list. Unfortunately, you can't really use this for busking a lot because the one widget I use to control fade time, and I'll just show you quickly in a minute here. Let me go out of run mode for a minute. We'll stop. If I put up the timer button, which is what I use to control fade times. And I'll just give this a color. Let me select it and say we're going to make this like bright yellow. Okay. If I update my screen, I'm going to go back to landscape just so you can see this. Notice that it just comes up with a block here saying that this particular feature is not yet available for the web interface mode. And as I mentioned in part one, if you look at the help file and you look under web interface down at the bottom, they will tell you that what limitations there are, what kind of things that will not be displayed when you bring it up on your smart device and using the web interface mode. All right. Hopefully this helps you though to design something that may work on your smartphone or tablet. You can make it work for you.